The big um, conundrum is punishment. That's what the three days is all about. Um, and a lot of what today is about. I think the title of today is, what is it? Dominance, Fighting, Biting, Compliance, and Punishment. So, to me, the, the big thing in training is that the dog does what the owner asks him to do. We have compliance. We have reliability of response. If not, the owner gets frustrated, and usually the dog gets punished. Um, Actually, more usually, it doesn't get punished, it gets harassed or abused. And this is a huge distinction that I'm making today, that here's the deal about punishment. Um, you're looking at two demographics of dog trainers. Um, a lot of them don't want to punish at all because they think that punishment is scary or painful. That's incorrect. It doesn't have to be at all. Punishment is only scary or painful if you elect to make it scary or painful. There is nothing at all in any of the learning theory literature that says that a primary positive punishment has to be painful or scary. I've just, the last two years, I went back and checked. It's just the fact that it was. You see, all learning theory experiments were done with what? Electric shock, yeah, computers which administered a food pellet or electric shock. And so the notion is that punishment has to be painful to be effective. It's absolutely not true. It, it reverberates with me that I can be totally inconsistent and train and hook a dog on a behavior by just being random. We don't even need a variable ratio reinforcement schedule, which is incredibly difficult to calculate while you're training. I'll have a go tomorrow. Um, I could have a go now. Let me have a go now. Let me try and get my brain in gear. I'll try it out. And you, if you write down the numbers, you can add up, see if I'm correct or not. We're going to do a VI5 variable interval, five second sit stay. So on average, I'm going to reward the dog every five seconds. We're going to do 10 reps. Are you ready? After five seconds, after four seconds, after six seconds, after three seconds, after seven seconds, after five seconds, after five seconds, after two seconds, after eight seconds, after five seconds. Whew. 10 trials adds up to 50 seconds in all, divided by 10 equals 5 seconds. Did I do that correct? Did anyone write it down? <laughs> could you do that and train the dog at the same time? Yeah. Not me. I only could do it because I practiced it last night in my room. <laughs> okay? Um, and there are tricks, actually, to remember that. But I won't tell you my tricks. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> and no, it's not card counting like in blackjack. Um, <laughs> So, anyway, um, no, you can be totally random. I'll reward you maybe, yes, no, I don't know, I, don't, I feel bad. I'm breaking wind at the moment, I don't have time, or whatever. <laughs> and it will cement that behavior, the retention with random reinforcement is huge compared to continuous reinforcement. So, this is the eighth criterion, you know, it's effectiveness. That for punishment training to be effective, you've got to punish the dog every time. You miss once, you screwed the pooch. With reward training, you can be a total scatterbrain and the dog is hooked like a drug on that behavior as people are hooked on slot machines. And the first thing we want to work out, well, what is bringing dog training down? Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a number of things. Um, I mentioned some yesterday. A biggie is, as um, pet dog training separated from obedience training, so this is like throughout the 80s. And um, we created basically this, this whole new field of pet dog training. It was largely puppy based. We basically created two demographics. The old um, obedience competitors, they had their specialist dogs. Um, in England, every dog is black and white. In the uh, US, lots and lots of goldens um, at owning obedience. Um, why we had that big difference, I have no idea. Um, and then we had the, the working dogs, you know, we've got your Shepherds and your Malinois and what have you. And you had trainers who had been in class for years. I mean, once you got into an obedience class, it seemed you went there, you know, every night on Thursday for three years, and this is what you did. Everything was geared towards competitive obedience. So right from the first class, you know, it was we've got to get the dog healing, we've got to get stays, um, 
and working towards the, uh, having the off-leash recall and the off-leash healing. In pet dog training, we have every breed of dog, every type of person, um, many children. So totally different demographic. And gradually, the tests disappeared. When do I phase out the food as a reward? Yeah, because, yeah. When I get to the next step. Yeah, we're still doing one. Um, I, in a demo, you'll see this in nearly all my demos, I have the treat in my pocket, usually within three repetitions. I'll pick a great dog, like uh, on the good little Dumba, in a good little dog book. The, the dog there is called Jess, which belongs to Barry Eaton. This is how long I've known Barry, because Jess is dead now. And um, you see me, I take Jess. Before Jess, I take a Rottweiler. I take Jess. I go, it goes like this. Come here, treat. Come here, sit, treat. So we went one behavior, reward. Two behaviors, reward. And then I go, come here, sit, down, sit, stand, down, stand. Seven behaviors, treat. And then I may go, sit, down, sit, Sit, down, sit, stand, down, sit, treat. Nine behaviors and a reward. Then I say, watch this. Come on, puppy, come here. Sit. Good boy. Yeah, I don't have a treat in my hand. Boom. Damn. So you go back to me. The fourth trial, I go back and do it without a treat in my hand. And I do it really short. So he does it and he gets the reward. So he learns Ian doesn't have to have a treat in his hand for me to get it. So then I go, come here, and sit, and down, oh, good boy, boom. And we move on, and by about trial 12, I'm doing the whole routine with empty hands. So my food, in many of my TV demos, the fourth trial I do, it's gone from my hand to my pocket. Adult dogs, um, it's all different now. You know, as you watch this, the video, and as you ask the questions about adult dogs and the problems, I want you to think what you could have done if you were doing a puppy class. And whatever any of you are doing, I want you to do puppy classes. It's, it's the solution. It's the only way. Uh, do your canine country clubs. The puppy tract is fun. It's fun. And the payoff comes when they finish puppy two and they come back for an activity class. And we are now, we've just adopted nose work. It's a new class we offer. Um, Kelly is teaching the first class. It's full up. It's so popular. It started in LA. Jill Marie O'Brien started it. And it's basically a pet dog finding sense. And it's, a, but it's, so it's a pet dog class. And it's a fun class. Uh, dogs search individually, so you can take adult dogs with temperament problems. Um, people love it. Canine Games class, we're bringing back. The first one started three, I don't know why I stopped Canine Games classes and why I stopped putting on Canine Games events. Without a doubt, it is the most enjoyable thing that's ever happened in dogs. The feeling you get at a Canine Games event is, oh my word, this is how it should be. These dogs are amazing. The level of training is like I've never seen in any dog competition. Um, the dogs are so reliable. Let's talk about some games. So, we make a game about anything. Anything. It, it, it doesn't matter um, what it is. We have some standards in the canine games. Um, you know, musical chairs, uh, doggy dash. I mean, you can see all these on Dogstar Daily, so I'm not really going to um, talk about them that much. I like games that really show creativity and they stimulate you as a trainer. I like watching um, a game where I see an owner do something, I think, oh, wow, that is so cool. That is so cool. The first time I saw a dog run backwards, I thought, that is really funny, and then hustle. So running backwards was one thing, but then when she said hustle, this dog went into hyperspeed, ran backwards, and his butt hit the wall. <laughs> I thought, I've never seen anything like that. Uh, the day in a, a dancing routine when I first saw a dog move from a downstay to a bow position. Can you visualize it? You all know bow to downstay. Everyone's done that. But have you then seen the butt come up out of the ground? It's so funny, you know? And you see stuff like that. So we have a number of games at dueling dogs. 
and then follow the leader. So dueling dogs was actually first done um, 1993 in the meeting when the APDT was founded. And the two, two duelers were Sandy and my trainer, Doug. Sandy had a uh, Springer Spaniel, Doug had a Border Terrier. And dueling dogs goes like this. Everyone in the room goes, one, two, three, Doug. One, two, three, Sandy. One, two, three, Doug. And when you say your name, you have to get your dog to do something. Then the next person does something. Then the next person. You can't duplicate. If you duplicate, you're out.